In a world where survival is a constant struggle, every step can be the difference between life and death. Among a wide variety of hazards and threats, one particular menace stands out, the dreaded Kazador. Welcome to 1000 Ways to Die in the Wastes. This is the series where we discuss in visceral PG-13 detail just how brutal the wasteland can be, even if the video games don't do it justice. In this episode, we'll be going over just what exactly makes the Cazador one of the wasteland's most feared species. The sting from a Cazador is one of the worst ways to go. In the desolate desert of the Mojave wasteland, one critter poses a serious threat, striking fear into the hearts of most common folk. The Cazador, meaning hunter in Spanish, is a nightmarish insect posing a unique combination of attributes that make them one of the most feared species in the wasteland. The origins of the Cazador date back to pre-war, before the world was torn asunder. Within the Z14 Pepsin-A DNA splicing lab, think tank member Dr. Boros was hard at work concocting some of the most heinous crossbreeds the world had seen. According to Boros, the Cazadors were created by cross-splicing the DNA of the tarantula hawk wasps and various other insects, resulting in the lethal and aggressive Cazador species. At some point following the end of the world, Cazadors managed to escape their confines at the splicing lab and migrated to the Mojave wasteland, where they would begin to reproduce and populate the arid desert. At first glance, the Cazador's appearance is enough to instill fear in even the most seasoned wasteland travelers. Resembling a grotesque and monstrous version of a wasp, Cazadors are large, predatory creatures with elongated, bony limbs. Their dark exoskeleton serves as a protective shell, shielding them from the harsh environment they inhabit. With their distinct bright orange wings spanning outwards, they are swift and agile flyers, making them formidable airborne predators. Their haunting buzzing sound echoes through the wasteland, signaling their presence and sending shivers down the spines of any nearby wanderers. It would seem that through these physical attributes, Dr. Boros had created one of the deadliest creatures the wasteland had witnessed. But, what if I told you that the Cazador is real? Similar to some other followed creatures, the Cazador is based on a real-life insect, the aforementioned tarantula hawk wasp. I won't be showing any pictures of these real-life bugs, because bugs give me the creeps. Virtual bugs are fine, real bugs, not so much. Like their real-life counterparts, the Cazador possesses an intimidating stinger extending from their abdomen. However, while the tarantula hawk wasp uses this stinger to paralyze its prey, Cazadors take it to a whole new level of brutality. We'll get into that shortly. Much like the tarantula hawk wasp, Cazadors are highly territorial and fiercely aggressive. Cazadors travel in swarms, their collective strength posing an overwhelming threat to any living creature that crosses their path. Their aggressive behavior extends to any creature, human or otherwise, making them a top-tier predator that strikes fear into the hearts of wasteland inhabitants. Their adaptation to the harsh and irradiated environment of the Fallout universe has made them relentless survivors. Cazadors can be found lurking near caves, abandoned buildings, and remote areas, making navigation through the wasteland a perilous endeavor. But what exactly makes the Cazador so deadly? Well, protruding from the Cazador's abdomen is a long and deadly stinger. The Cazador stinger is a weapon of unimaginable lethality. When this terrifying creature strikes with its venomous sting, the consequences are swift and merciless, leaving victims writhing in agony and fighting for their lives. Within the game, Cazadors pose a substantial threat and serve as a source of dread for most players. While their melee attack deals a whopping 70 points of damage, 
it is actually their stinger that is their biggest threat. From their stinger, an extremely potent venom is injected into the victim, dealing 8 poison damage per second over 30 seconds. This totals a whopping 240 points of damage. Combined with their swarming and group tendencies, Cazadors are always a frightening encounter. But how would being stung by a Cazador really feel? We know the poison packs a punch, but what would that really feel like if we were within the Fallout universe ourselves? Well, for that we look to the Cazador's real life counterpart, the Tarantula Hawk Wasp. What may surprise you is that the Tarantula Hawk Wasp's sting is known to be one of the most painful insect stings in the world, causing intense searing pain that can last for several minutes. While its venom is normally used to paralyze tarantula spiders in order for the wasp to lay their eggs, there are some accounts of humans being on the receiving end of these painful stings. Victims of tarantula hawk wasp stings often describe the pain as excruciating, a feeling of being branded by a red hot poker. The intense discomfort can be accompanied by localized swelling and even shortness of breath as the venom targets the victim's nervous system. According to the Schmidt Sting Pain Index, the tarantula hawk wasp is only second to the bullet ant. Schmidt describes the sting as blinding, fierce, and shockingly electric. Now imagine if the size and potency of this 3 inch long insect was scaled up several degrees of magnitude. Well, now you have the Cazador. What was the feeling of a red hot poker is now a blistering and searing blanket of pain across the entire body. A torturous existence until the Cazador's prey succumbs to the pain. Now, one might be under the impression that this is the part where the Cazador devours your limp and paralyzed body, but if the real life tarantula hawk wasp has any influence on the Cazador's behavior, then the sting is just the first part in a long, drawn out suffering. This may come as a surprise, but tarantula hawk wasps are actually nectivores, meaning that they only feed on the sweet nectar of flowering plants. So why do they attack and seemingly hunt tarantulas? Well, it's for their own life cycle purposes. The life cycle of a tarantula hawk wasp starts when a female tarantula hawk wasp stings a tarantula. The venom in their sting paralyzes the spider. The wasp then drags the immobile spider to a specially prepared burrow where the wasp lays a single egg on the spider's abdomen. The burrow is then covered up to keep it safe from predators, and the egg is left to hatch. Once the wasp larva hatches, it creates a hole in the spider's abdomen, enters said hole, and begins chowing down, doing its best to avoid any vital organs to keep the spider alive for as long as possible. After several weeks of feasting, the larva pupates eventually transforming into an adult wasp. The wasp, all grown up now, emerges from the now dead spider's body, ready to continue the circle of life. Isn't mother nature beautiful? Well, quite foul if you ask me. But again, if the behavior of the real life tarantula hawk wasp has any influence on the fictional Cazador, then I think you can see where this is going. Once the Cazador's victim has succumbed to the paralyzing venom issued by its stinger, it's likely that they will then proceed to drag you somewhere, lay an egg on your chest, and let their offspring feast on your still alive, but paralyzed corpse. You'll be being eaten alive, likely from the inside out. A fate perhaps worse than death. As the sun sets over the desolate arid wastes of the Mojave, the low hum of the Cazador serves as a chilling reminder of the unforgiving nature of the Fallout universe. What was once a sick DNA splicing experiment concocted in the pre-war labs of the Big Empty has now escaped its confines, allowing for its rapid proliferation across the desert wasteland. 
The Cazador, combined with its agility and venomous sting, offers an unimaginably painful and deadly fate for any who cross its path. Though I hope, thanks to this video, it's a bit more imaginable. Thanks for listening. If you liked the video, be sure to share and subscribe. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers. In 2000, let's see, carry the three, then count backwards with the great static, or beyond, there were the tarantula debates, and something about hawks which made it around. 2003, May, Tuesday, it was definitely Tuesday.